Okay. So this is like a bag like papule. Good. Very fibrotic from here. high power. Yeah, I mean, basically at low power, this is an acrocordon, right? Skin tag. Yeah. But. Yeah, but in the, in the superficial term, as I say, uh, they are like these scattered uh, hyperchromatic stellate UCI large. Yeah, good. But, uh, I don't see any mitosis in them, but like they are kind of scattered and kind of hypocellular. Good. Uh, so this should be like because of this large stellate UCI, it is a benign lesion, but it is called pleomorphic fibroma. Yeah, very good. This is a pleomorphic fibroma. To me, they look like either a polypoid or sometimes a sessile polyp. They don't always have a stalk like this one. Sometimes they're kind of a flattened base that attaches. They're usually on the trunk or sometimes the extremities. And they look like a skin tag, but they have a variable amount of hyperchromatic, atypical, often stellate or even multinucleated kind of cells scattered out in the dermis. And like you said very nicely, they are hypocellular. So that's how, even though they can be even uglier than this, but there's such a low cellularity that they wouldn't fit for, well, for one thing, it's on the trunk. Atypical fibrosanthoma, like I told you, extremely uncommon on the trunk. So that's out. And they're not cellular enough to be like an atypical dermatofibroma or most of the other things in the sarcoma, the different sarcomas we think of would be more cellular than this usually. So what you're left with is this entity called pleomorphic fibroma, which was kind of thought to represent an atypical form of basically like a skin tag in the past. But now what we think um, is that there's, there's newer evidence that suggests that these probably are more closely related to spindle cell and pleomorphic lipoma. Because like spindle cell and pleomorphic lipoma, these have RB1 loss, loss of nuclear RB1 staining uh, due to de deletion uh, in a 13Q. And um, that is seen in spindle cell and pleomorphic lipomas as well as a variety of other entities, all of which tend to share kind of, uh, most of which tend to share closely related microscopic features. And I love that people also have done MDM2 on these to see are these maybe related to well diff liposarc, atypical lipomas tumor, and they're MDM2 negative. So I like the idea that these are actually kind of like an intradermal fat-free relative of pleomorphic lipoma, which is of course totally benign as well. Why I like that is because sometimes in these, I see ropey collagen and myxoid change, and occasionally I've seen little clusters of adipocytes in the dermis with these. And so I love when that, when that paper came out a few years back, um, I love that because it validates what I, the spectrum of changes I've seen in these, that you can sometimes see a, a overlapping features with pleomorphic um, lipoma. Occasionally, I have seen mitoses, including atypical mitoses, in what otherwise looks like a pleomorphic fibroma, just like we can sometimes see mitoses and atypical mitoses in pleomorphic lipoma and related entities. So in that setting, though, I have, when I've seen that, if it's transected at the base, I've said, I think it's still a pleomorphic fibroma, but can you please go back and do a small excision to make sure that, that, that we're not missing something else underneath? Because especially when mixoid changes there, I have seen times where mixofibrosarcoma, which is a, a sarcoma that usually develops in the extremities of elderly patients and has a, a strong tendency to grow in the subcutis or the dermis. I've seen that sometimes trickle up into the dermis and have an appearance kind of similar to this. So if I see uh, the atypia and mitoses, especially if it's in an older adult and I'm just getting a partial biopsy, I will often say, um, you know, in that setting, can you go back and give me an excision just to make sure there's nothing else underneath? Because these are like dermal only lesions. And so if they go back and the, the times I've had that happen, there's been nothing left. And so it was all good. But that's my, the only thing really that would worry me is that, that maybe I'm the top of something that, that I'm getting a partial sample of a deeper lesion. Um, but otherwise, there's nothing else bad that I can think of that would look like this in the skin. And see that, you're, like you said, stellate and kind of multinucleated pleomorphic cells. And if you want to help confirm it, you can do RV1, retinoblastoma 1 uh, immunostain to see if there's nuclear loss. It doesn't have to have that, but it often does. Okay, pleomorphic fibroma. When I make this diagnosis, I put a comment that this is a benign lesion that is related to spindle cell and pleomorphic lipoma and has some, some features that look like skin tag um, and that usually no further treatments needed unless that setting where I see mitoses and, I, and I've got a, a partial sample 
and that's the only time I add any comments that I'm, you know, wanting to go back and do something. That's how I handle it. Okay. 